Let's say you downloaded an installation file from the internet. You want to check if it is a malware or not, but online scanners doesn't return anything malicious. Using this tool to perform analysis, you will know exactly whether the file is malicious or not. In this video, I will show you a tool that can analyze whether a program is a malware or not. This tool is called QuickScope, an all-in-one malware analysis tool. This is written in Python, so we can easily install it via pip. I already did the setup, which you can easily follow from the README file. This tool can analyze different kinds of files like binaries, program executables, or Word documents. Let's start by analyzing a simple ransomware executable called Server. If you are curious where I get a sample, you can go to the Zoo project. To start analyzing something, we just run the Python script, pass the file name and the analyze flag. Depending on the size of the file, this may be fast or take longer. It is still extracting more strings from the binary, so let's pause here and come back again once finished. The analysis is finished, and we got interesting results, so let's understand. At the top, we see here the hash is in different formats. We are familiar with most of this, but the IMP hash is different. This is not the hash of the whole file, but only the hash of the external library's dependencies or imports. This is a forensic technique that allows fuzzy searching for malware samples. In the table, we have different categories. The first two shows us the imports and exports. I guess these are just informational since they are written in green color. After that, there are also different categories for various areas like registries, file, networking, process, and memory management. Same with the first two above. These are not intended to alarm us, but more of an informational message only. The next three are something we need to pay attention to. It was able to detect different strings related to evasion, persistence, and information gathering. These are the typical use cases of ransomwares. Let's scroll a bit up to see other findings. On the summary below, it only shows us the count of malicious strings and functions. But in this table, it shows us the actual name of those strings. We won't discuss all functions and strings here, but let's have an idea how the first two functions are used. The get module handle function is used to dynamically get the base address of an already loaded DLL in memory. Malwares also use the get proc address to get the memory address of other needed functions. This dynamic finding of resources allows them to avoid static inspection and signature-based analysis. These functions may also appear on the other techniques below. We see some messages here telling us that it was not able to perform artifact detection. This means if we go through the result, we can't really see what type of malware is this. It will only show us the malicious functions and strings inside. But using just those information, it will be hard to decipher what is the real purpose of this malware. In order to get more information, we can extend the tool functionality by also querying VirusTotal API. Before doing that, we first need to get an API key from VirusTotal. This is free from charge, but with some limitations on the calls per day. To add our key, we run the tool with this flag. After we add our key, we now run again the tool, but this time we add the VT file flag. So, in addition to the static analysis it performed, it will also query virus total to gather more information about the file. Using this method of aggregating different analysis techniques allows us to profile a malware properly. Now that the analysis is finished, let's see if it will give us a clear idea about the malware. We immediately see here the new results which came from virus total. In this table above, we see some indicators of compromise, such as the recorded IP address from attackers. We also see here the detections from different antivirus engines. The first entry tells us that this is a ransomware. That is also confirmed by this table above. So this now give us an idea that this file is a ransomware, which can potentially make our data unrecoverable. Aside from static checking, QuickScope can also perform dynamic analysis. To do that, you first need to have Docker installed and enabled. It is also good to add yourself under Docker Group so you can have permissions to launch containers under normal user. In this section, let's try some Linux malwares. I already have a sample Linux malware downloaded, so let's try this out. We will use same command on how we analyze a Windows executable, and it will automatically detect what analyzer to use. After we run it, we see here at the bottom it is asking us if we want to perform dynamic analysis. Since my Docker daemon is already up and running, I will just hit Y. In another terminal window, we see here that it launched a container to perform the analysis. Based from the image, the tool is using its custom container, which should include the necessary tools to perform binary analysis. After the analysis is done, we see here the results. 
We performed only a simple analysis, so we don't see a lot of results here right now. But you see that this tool can perform Linux analysis as well, and not only Windows. In a previous video, we looked into how Linux rootkit like Keraxes hide files from disk. If we run QuickScope against that rootkit, we won't see anything from VirusTotal. But we see from the table that it is doing information gathering, persistence, and evasion. This alone is enough for us to know that this module is malicious. QuickScope has other functionalities such as detecting if a Word or PDF document is malicious or detecting embedded payloads from Android APK files. If you are unsure whether a file is malicious or not, try to run that against this tool. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.